Hey y'all, in this video I want to talk about the Maelstrom TCG and why I think it's a ticking time bomb. Now if you want to get your panties in a wad and start arguing with me in the comment section, that's perfectly fine. At the end of the day, I have my opinion, you have your opinion. Opinions are like assholes. We all have them. But I truly believe that this game is going to flop very, very hard. And for a multitude of reasons. I really think that this game is the biggest bubble right now in this Kickstarter TCG realm that we find ourselves in. And Rudy just put out a video talking about this very thing. Most of these Kickstarter games are going to fail. It doesn't matter how good they look. It doesn't matter how well they play. It really comes down to the creator and how much beyond the first set do they have planned out. What are they going to do about distribution? What happens if they hit a brick wall? A lot of these things are going to help you formulate, should I back this game or should I not back this game? And right now, most of us are turning into investors. Everybody is fomo right now. Everybody is hyping every single Kickstarter that pops, and they all think it's going to the moon in penis-shaped rockets. And the truth is, some of these you might not even get product. So if you're dropping hundreds, if not thousands of dollars into these things, you better do your research. And unfortunately, we're not Rudy. So we don't have that capability to get down at that really nitty gritty level to kind of make these decisions. But I'm telling you right now that this game has a lot of red flags and we're going to talk about them later on. But for now, I'm not touching this game with a 10 foot pole. I do have some skin in the game. I do have some of these promo cards, specifically this Rider Pestilence horse looking thing. And by the way, the quality in these samples leaves much to be desired for. And I also have 24 of these version 2 uh, sample packs. So, I am in this game right now, but I believe I can get my money's worth out of this while the FOMO is high and then get out before the Kickstarter even drops and ships and everything. Because right now the Kickstarter has like 30 hours left and you can still get out. You still have time. I want this to be known right now. It is okay to step away and not get involved in every single Kickstarter, or at least not to dump your life savings into it. And I just want to warn people right now because I think they're cruising for a bruising with this one. I truly do believe it. I think this one is going to fizzle out very, very quickly. And I don't want to be caught holding the bag. And I don't want you to be caught holding the bag. So if you want to invest in this Kickstarter, buy some boxes and hope that you can flip them within that short little window, you probably could walk away and make a lot of money. Who am I to say that you can't? You know what I mean? But I'm not going to take that risk because I truly believe that this thing can flop basically as soon as that product comes out. And maybe not. Maybe it'll take a bit longer, six to eight months or something. But I don't know. I don't want to take that risk. And I'm not a lucky person, so my timing would be terrible if I tried to do it. So I'm just not going to touch it. I'm going to try to get rid of the stuff that I have, make the money I can make, and then move on to something else. And I feel like a lot of other people could benefit from this advice. And if not, again, you know, do what you want to do. It's your life. It's your money. That's perfectly fine. But the very first thing I want to talk about is the artwork in this game, which is basically the elephant in the room. Truly, I understand that artwork is subjective. That means... Someone might like it, someone else may hate it. That's perfectly fine. It doesn't mean that the artwork is trash. It doesn't mean that it's great. I understand that. But I think the consensus, what a lot of people that I've asked for this artwork is, a lot of it's just not very good. Some of it's all right. Like I kind of like this crystal card here, even though it's basically a knockoff of Fab and basically every other card game that has diamonds and crystals and stuff. This is very derivative of Digimon, just done a lot more poorly. And my question about this is, if you want something that looks like Digimon, why not just buy Digimon? I don't get it. It's like other worlds knock off a blue eyes white dragon. If you want the blue eyes white dragon, just buy Yu-Gi-Oh. But I digress. The biggest issue I have with the artwork with this game is it's very blurry. It's very muddy. The actual design of the cards, I don't think is very good. I think the back of the cards is good. That's the best part about this game is the back. I like that it's white. It's hard to tell if there's whitening going on. I like the rainbow. I think the back is very solid. But the front design, not so great. This one's kind of cool with that little hypnotic spiral and the hourglass and stuff. But I don't know. Like the diamonds down here are kind of cool and then this. But I don't know. I mean, it looks okay. But it doesn't look that great. And particularly with the full hollows because they're using the very cheap rainbow hollow across the whole card. That is so, so, so cheap. And we're going to talk about it later with the quality of these samples. But it's so cheap. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't look premium. And that's my problem with this game is it doesn't have that premium quality that like MetaZoo and Nostalgics and Grand Archive have. It just doesn't have it. And a lot of these things, I don't really know what I'm looking at. It's like the artist came in, they had a good design and they drew in the foundation and then they stepped away before they added the details. Devin looked at it and said, that's great. That's wonderful. Send it to the printers. And these are the cards that you're getting. And I truly don't understand it. Some people say it's supposed to be a watercolor effect, but so is MetaZoo and Pokemon. 
and they actually have details in their drawings. Their backgrounds aren't just washed out messes. Their images aren't getting blended together into a muddy, mucky mess. And with a lot of these cards, that's what's happening. Like, this is a good design, in my opinion. But look how muddy and blurry this is. It's like everything is out of focus. I feel like I'm drunk or something when I'm looking at the cards. And if you like them, by all means, maybe you got to use your imagination or something. But a lot of people want the cards to speak for themselves. And do you really think that people are going to want to collect these cards and put them in a binder? Do you really think that when you have things like MetaZoo out there, Dragon Ball Super that look freaking amazing, to say the least? And we're going to talk about some of these other games in a little bit that just look phenomenal. You're trying to tell me that people are going to push those aside and try to collect these. I just don't see it. And then cards like these combat cards and the equipment and location cards. It literally looks like somebody took some toilet paper, wiped their ass with it, stuck it underneath a microscope, and then somebody painted what they saw. It's very, very bland. It's very, very abstract, which some of them are kind of cool in their abstractness. Like this one's kind of cool. But a lot of them are not. They're just a bunch of nothingness on a card. And there's tons of them. They're worse than the Aura cards. They're worse than the Energy cards in Pokemon. People are going to be pulling so many of these things, and they're not going to be hyped. They're not going to be hyped at all. They're going to go straight into the trash can. And that's where the problem lies. Truly. I mean, as we continue to go down here, you're going to see some of these cards. Again, they have a good inkling of a design, but are just lacking in so much details. And some of them turn into a muddy mess. And then these ones, I'm assuming, are placeholder cards because they're vector and they're not in the style of the game at all. So I do believe that these are going to be worked on. Hopefully, if not, that's a serious concern in my opinion. But as we continue to move on, again, decent, decent, but garbage. This one has some details in the beads and stuff, but again, it just gets super blurry. Then you come down to this card, and this is what I call the Photoshop special. I know a lot of naive like really amateur Photoshopists that I see on my Facebook all the time that are trying to sell like mixtape covers and stuff. And what they always do is they take an image and they chop it down and they skew it into weird proportions. So it's super tall and really skinny or really fat, really short. I don't understand what they're doing. I take one look at it and I want to hurl. That's what this card reminds me of. It's just in a very weird crop proportion. It just doesn't look right. And I just want to scream at the top of my lungs every single time I look at it. I just don't like it. It looks like garbage. But again, that's my personal opinion. Maybe you think otherwise. This one I think is good, but again, it's lacking so much detail. It's like I just want someone to go in there and just add in, you know, you know, different lines and shading and detail in the eyes and the mouth. And there's just so much more that could be done to this card that they're just not doing for whatever reason. And I just don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. And then we get to the asshole cards that look like they're literally just wiped onto the freaking cardboard. I don't know what's going on with half of these things. I don't see why people would want to collect these. There's nothing special about them at all. And if you throw the rainbow hollow on them, it's not going to make them look any better. It's like trying to polish a turd with the cheapest hollowing polish that you could find. Because it's not even layered hollowing. It's just nonsense. It's just the cheapest garbage that you can get. Moving on, before I have an aneurysm. This is pretty cool. I like this card. But again, lacking details. This literally looks like this came in and just smudged the brushes together, which is fine. But again, there's just no detail covering that up. And that lack of detail, it just doesn't do it for me. This is my favorite card out of all of these. I actually like this card. I like the binary chains and stuff in the background. But again, there's not enough detail there for me to actually be like, you know what? I want to buy that card. I want to slab it in PSA and I want to hang it up on my wall. I don't have that connection. It's not good enough for me to actually want the card. And that's the problem because if the best card in your set, as far as I think, you know, is concerned, and I still don't want to own the actual card, then there's a problem. Because in other card games, if I really like the card, I want it. Regardless if I don't have any of the other cards, I don't plan on playing the game or anything like that, I want it and I'm going to try to get it. But here, I could care less. That card can just go down the toilet and I really wouldn't care. You know what I mean? And that's the problem. This one too, I think looks really good, but again, lacking details. And it's just so much more of the same. These cards are great examples of not even knowing what's going on, what the hell I'm looking at. They're just muddy messes of color just thrown together into weird, you know, shapes. And I don't know. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand the appeal for this game. And as we go down here, I don't know. As we go down here, we're going to check, check out Nostalgics. Now, Nostalgics is interesting because I didn't like Nostalgics at first. When I first saw this thing, I was like, you know what? This game isn't for me. I didn't like the name. 
this and that, but it grew on me. And the more I look at this artwork, the more I fall in love with it because it's actual solid artwork. Not every single one. Some of these are pretty bad, believe me, but like the Jellyphant, the Booster Box Dragon, the Evangeline down here, some of this artwork is phenomenal. The Takoon, it just looks really, really good. Imagine this in hollow. Like that is orgasmic. It truly is. And as you continue to move down here, the Gamatron, beautiful artwork. Detail after detail, nice backgrounds that actually make sense. Just nice, cohesive designs. And as you go down into the Void Rares, there's some really sick artwork down here. And the first editions that I just put out, mwah, icing on the cake. Some of the most beautiful cards I've ever seen. Like, honestly. And the card design, I mean, take it or leave it. You may not, you know, particularly like with these giant drops down here and stuff, but it is what it is, you know, but it's still beautiful. Same thing with Grand Archive. You might not like anime TCGs or anime in general, but you cannot deny that this artwork is not beautiful. Like it is stunning artwork and is very, very cohesive across the board. And honestly, why would you not want to collect this and you'd want to collect this? I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. And then Sorcery? This is literally the Holy Grail. Like, this is the cream of the crop right here. And we already know Rudy's back in this game. I mean, this has the original magic artist behind it. And it's beautiful hand-painted art. Like, you cannot get any better than this. Like, these are literal art pieces that you're staring at right here. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This is the kind of stuff that people want to collect. This is the kind of stuff that people are going to want to spend tons of money on. And are going to become very valuable in the future. Not only because the cards look so good... But the game itself, from what I've seen, is a very solid game. The same thing with Grand Archive. I think it's very solid. I think this is a great competitor to uh, Wise and also Fab. I think it's an anime version of Fab, in my opinion. And Nostalgics, this honestly is the only game I saw out of the bunch that I would actually want to play. And I even played the game since Yu-Gi-Oh! back in like 2002. It looks that fun. Like, I really want to play. And from what I see with Maelstrom, it does not look fun at all. It looked like a mess from the diagrams and stuff they were showing. It just did not look good to me. And maybe I'll change my mind when I actually see it played. But it just didn't look good. It did not look good to me. So if the gameplay isn't good, the artwork isn't good, and then the creator, I don't really know what to say. You know what I mean? At this point in time, I can't say what the artists you know, behind the game are really going to do in the future. Are they going to grow as the game continues to get, you know into its further sets because when nostalgics they're already growing they're already putting out artwork that's better than the original sets metazoo we're growing with the artists as every set comes out but when maelstrom are the artists going to grow or are they just going to continue to put out this nonsense because that's what devin wants and that's what devin likes i don't know and that's worrisome that's very very worrisome for me so i don't want to touch it i truly don't now the second reason why i don't like this game and again you know, maybe this is subjective, maybe it isn't, but I truly believe if you go into the Discord and you see the following that it has, that that's a complete facade. If you really think that all those people are there because they want to play the game or because they want to even just invest into the game in a healthy manner. Because let's face it, every single one of these games is getting pumped to the sky, like I said, right now. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of people there that actually truly like the game, actually truly like the cards. They want to collect it. They want to put it in binders. I don't believe a lot of those people in that Discord are there for that reason. I really don't. He's giving away all these massive lots of cards and pulling people in through these giveaways. I think that's why a lot of people are there. And then also, he's just telling people, oh, even before the Kickstarter you know, happened, he's like, oh, follow the Kickstarter, and then I'm going to give away this. I'm going to give away that. So people are there just because they want to win things. Or people are there because they think this game is going to blow up. I truly thought this wasn't going to go past like 300,000, and we're now hitting 600,000 which is absolutely insane and asinine in my personal opinion. And if you go through some of his goals that he's added here, some of the stretch goals, some of the add-ons, everything is exclusive. Everything is rare. That's my problem. He's trying to hit like MetaZoo level rarity with like print runs of like 2,000 boxes and stuff with the actual like size of a campaign that you see with Nostalgics or Grand Archive. Because you got to remember, Grand Archive has like 12,000 booster boxes. Nostalgics has 5,000. But Maelstrom is all about that rarity. They want that 2,000, but they also want to have that 600, 700,000, you know, Kickstarter campaign. And the problem with that is you have to add a lot of stuff. And if you want to add a lot of stuff, it's got to be exclusive. So everything is exclusive. Everything is rare. And when everything is rare, nothing is rare. And that's the problem I have with this game. The same thing with the packaging and stuff. It looks okay, but it doesn't have that premium presence that Nostalgics has, that MetaZoo has. It just doesn't have it. It looks kind of amateurish to me. And again, maybe you don't agree with me, 
but it doesn't look that premium. As we continue to scroll down, there's some cool cards down here from what I saw. These would actually probably be three of my favorite cards. This is what you would call watercolor. This is what you call abstract. And they're actually nailing it here, where I think they fail in a lot of other aspects with a lot of the other cards. These three are hitting it home. Like if the whole card game looked like this, I'd be all on board because this is sick. This is some like stuff that you'd see from those old like scary stories of telling the dark or something. The books from way back in the days from our childhood. That's what this reminds me of. It looks really good. And this card that they added as well for the stretch looks really good. Of course, they had to add something to pull people in, but that's really good. If the rest of the game looked like that, I'd be all on board with this. But it doesn't. And that's the problem. 95% of the cards look like trash. And then the last card down here, this is really cool too. Like if you see this actually, you know, full size and detail, it looks really good. But the problem is he chopped it up into four pieces for a puzzle card. So you have to put them all together and make one giant card. I've never been a fan of that. And I don't think a lot of other people are either. I'd rather he does it like Exodia where you actually have the borders around each section of the card. That I actually like. I don't like this puzzle piece crap. So I think he ruined this artwork doing that. But it is what it is. At the end of the day, you know, you have to make your decisions. And that's the problem. Just too much rarity, too much FOMO, too much hype. The game doesn't look very good. Oh, look, it dropped below 600,000. <laughs> the game doesn't look very good. <coughs> Excuse me. The artwork doesn't look very good. And I just don't like it, man. I don't like it. And as far as the quality of the cards are concerned, I understand that these are sample cards and everything. But it's not doing it for me. Like this, you know what this reminds me of? Like if I went to like FedEx Kinko's or something and I said I wanted some business cards or advertisement pieces done um, for like, say I own like a car wash or I detail cars or whatever the case may be. I fix computers or whatever. You want like these little flyers or something? That's basically what this reminds me of. Like it's okay. You know what I mean? But it's just plain Jane cardboard. And if you look at it, the text is fuzzy. The print quality just isn't up to snuff. And the quality just isn't there compared to Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, even MetaZoo. And the thing about MetaZoo is, I don't think MetaZoo is very good either. I truly don't. Their quality is kind of lackluster, but it's higher quality than this. Like this doesn't even have a smell, really. This actually smells like a real trading card. And I also love the selective hollowing. We'll go back here so we can actually see what's going on. And uh, yeah, I love the selective hollowing. This is what a premium card game should look like. Not everything should be hollow. If you're hollowing the whole thing, I'm sorry. I mean, I've even talked to like Zaba from uh, Nostalgics and even he said the rainbow hollow across the card is the cheapest you can get. And I'm not sure if that's how the actual game is planning to be done. But from what I've seen from the Kickstarter and stuff, that's exactly how it's supposed to be done. But this is a card up front, close and personal. It's okay. I mean, I was shitting all over this quality yesterday or the other day when I got it. And still, it's not very good. And maybe I'm just being an asshole and being super critical, but I'm just telling you, it, it's okay. For what it is, it's okay. But it's not the quality that I would you know, expect from an actual TCG, from a real trading card game. It's just not there. You know what I mean? And my question is, is this going to be the quality for the actual cards? Or is this just the sample quality? Because since the, the actual cards look very similar to the samples, I would assume it's the same thing. Now, this is the hollow. I'm not going to take it out of the case, but I only got one of these suckers anyway, and I'm hoping I can make some money on it. But it's a little bit harder to read the text in person. It's a little bit more fuzzy. And the hollowing leaves fingerprints behind. It's just leaves so much to be desired for, in my personal opinion. And again, I'm probably just being super anal, but I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. And then, like I said, I got a few of these, but I'm just, I'm not feeling this crap. So, you know, it's up to you to make the decision. I don't like it. I've gone into the Discord and I've tried to ask people that act like they're really into this game and they really want to collect it. I try to ask them, what about this game really encapsulates you? Why do you want to collect this game? Why do you want to buy this game? And I haven't really had anybody give me a response, you know, as far as anything beyond they just want to make money or the FOMO and this and that, like truly. And I know a lot of people said the same thing about MetaZoo, but the thing is MetaZoo was actually good. So MetaZoo completely broke through those barriers. But in my case, I don't see it happening here. And that's the problem. I truly believe that this game is going to crash and burn very, very quickly. And if you don't get out of it, you're going to be stuck holding that bag. Because the problem is... There's going to be a few people that want to get in that haven't gotten in. 
I mean, some of the add-ons and stuff are going to come back and they might be able to get in at the very end. But if they miss out, they don't know about it, they learn about it a couple weeks later or something, and people are still FOMOing and hyping it up, people are going to want to buy in in the very beginning because they're going to think they can buy boxes and it's going to go to the moon. So there's going to be a couple weeks there where there's going to be some buyers buying them. But as soon as those people dry up, I think people are going to look at these cards and go, why do I want this when there's all these other card games coming out? Cryptic is coming out. Sorcery is coming out. A bunch of other card games we don't even know about. And again, Maelstrom is just going to crash and burn under these circumstances. I truly believe it. And I could be wrong. At the end of the day, I could be wrong. But this is my personal opinion from what I'm seeing. I think there's red flag after red flag here. And just do not get burned. That's all I'm saying. You got 32 hours to make your decision. Lighten your load or completely pull out because there's other places to make money. There really is. And if you just like Devin's vision, you like the cards, then by all means, stay in it, do what you want to do. But I'm not feeling it. And that's why I think the Maelstrom TCG is a ticking time bomb. I thank you for watching this video. I might make more videos on some other TCGs. I'm not quite sure at this point in time. But yeah, so without further ado, um, thanks for watching.